one day I'll get a Wagner mug. Ooh, that'd be really cool if I had a collection of like, you know how people have the collections for like all the Starbuckses? I want one of all the composers. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Hello, and welcome back to my opera channel. I am Avi, an opera singer, and uh, your guide on this ring cycle journey. This is part three out of five. If you missed part one, which is the crash course of the ring cycle, go check that out up here. And if you would like to know what happened in the previous opera, Das Rheingold, it's also right up there. I'll wait, see you in a minute. Oh, hello, before we continue, just a short message from the gods. Thank you so much to Rosie Brooks for all the illustrations in this video and every other video that we've collaborated on. All of her links are down below, so definitely go check them out. The gods say hello. All right, let's jump into where we left off. Between operas one and two, Wotan has come up with this magnificent plan to impregnate a mortal woman and start the lifeline of Valsung and create an immortal free-willed man to go and fetch the ring. Now, Albrecht has done exactly the same thing. Both of these male specimens have steeped long enough and are perfectly brewed and ready for the job at hand. Do you like my tea pun? And we are ready to join them again in act one of Die Valkure. It was a dark and stormy eve, just like the beginning of any good story. On this dark and stormy eve, a disheveled young man is looking for a place to rest his heavy head. Out in the distance, he discovers a house. This house isn't like any other ordinary house. It has a large tree in the center of the house with a sword lodged in the center of it. Also is home to a sad and beautiful maiden. All right, moving back to like normal storytelling because that was pretty difficult to write. Our young man falls into the house and is in and out of consciousness the entire time, which is making it pretty difficult for conversation. Who are you? Where am I? This is Hunding's hut, I'm his wife, and you probably shouldn't be here because he's really not a fan of company or visitors in general. But I'm unarmed! She offers him something to drink to revive his spirits, but instead of sending him on his way, she asks him a lot more questions. Who are you running from? Bad luck. Wherever I go, it follows me. Well, you've come to the heart of it because there's loads of bad luck in this place. <laughs> Stay as long as you need. Um, what about your husband? You just said he doesn't like visitors. But there is some kind of very special chemistry between the two of these people. It's not long after that when her husband with his giant entourage returned from their very unsuccessful hunting excursion. Who's this? Our stranger finally has a chance to explain his story. My name is Wolfel. I used to have a father and a sister and a mother, but they're all dead now. My dad and I used to be these two like really heroic guys and go and we'd do everything together and we're really great. But then my dad disappeared and my sister and mother were killed. And uh, ever since then, I've had really, really bad luck. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I saw this damsel in distress this evening and I was trying to help her out, but that didn't go very well. She died and now the guys that I was protecting her from are running after me and that's me. Hunding straightens up. You mean us? You're you're running from us? <laughs> oh shit. He just walked into the hornet's nest. Oh, that was a bad idea. As hospitality dictates, you can stay the night, but uh, at the crack of dawn, we're gonna deal with this like men. Make sure you're armed. Hunding has his wife prepare him a very special drink by the bed, and then at that point, it's time for everyone to go to bed, but not before. Hunding realizes there's a bit of a spark between this stranger and his wife, Zieglinda. But he leaves it there and everyone goes off to bed, but not for long. As our woeful stranger ponders how he's going to survive this battle, Zieglinda rushes in for some alone time because their previous conversation was cut just a bit short, so she has put a little extra spice into her husband's drink tonight, so they have nothing to worry about. They're not gonna be disturbed. She then shares her own story. I was kidnapped and forced to marry Hunding, but on my wedding day, this stranger arrived and he took the sword and embedded it into the trunk of the tree and put a spell on it that only the worthiest of men and the bravest of heroes will be able to pull it out. Kind of like Arthur in the stone or Thor in his hammer. I'm watching a lot of Marvel lately. 
Somehow from this, they understand that that man was the head of the Valsung family, the head wolf, and both of their fathers, and that they are evidently the twins that they've been looking at for, and, now this is where it gets weird, that they are in love. And not sibling love, not normal sibling love, but Cersei and Jamie sibling love. After a lot of singing and throwing around the term sister bride, the two of them decide to consummate this experience and run away before Hunden catches them. But not before Zygmunda renames her brother. From now on, you should no longer be known as Vofel, but as Victorious, which translates into Zygmunt. He victoriously pulls the sword out of the tree and the two of them run off into the moonlight. End of act one. Wow, what an act. Sip of tea and then we will continue. Act two, we return to Valhalla. Back in Valhalla, it is time to meet Votan's most favorite daughter in the most epic entrance of all time. You know that, you know that entrance. Brunhilde. They've been watching Votan's plan unfold in the land of the mortals. And Votan asks Brunhilde, his favorite daughter, to protect his favorite son, now known as Siegmund, against Hunding. But before she is able to run off, Frika, Votan's wife, goddess of marriage, loyalty, contracts, all the things that Votan is terrible at abiding by, is like marching up in her chariot over to visit. They don't have the best marriage. Um, Dad, it looks like uh, your wife is coming to coming for a fight. Um, I'm gonna skedaddle. Frika arrives and now she is livid and for some reason the only person that thinks this whole brother-sister thing is gross. And also she has been asked by Hunding for help because his marriage vows were broken and she's also like really pissed off at Votan for being so bad at being faithful to her and having all these children from with all these different women and them all being like all over the place. Rightfully so. Anyway, she tells him to let Zygmunt die and pay for his crimes against Hunding. Votan tries to convince her that Zygmunt needs to live. Listen, I get, I get it, I get it. He's done a lot of like horrible things and like, yeah, it's gross and stuff. But if he survives, he can then get the rig back and you know, this whole thing can follow as planned and we can get our power back and everything's gonna be back to normal. Cause he has his own free will. And I mean like, Albrecht did the same thing with his son, so why can't I do the same thing with my son? Yeah, um, not a great argument, man. Really not a great argument. Frika isn't having it and Siegmund has to go. Well, has to come. Has to die and become hers. You set him up for this. This is not free will. He did not pick to be in this position. You forced him into doing it. Votan finally folds. Fine, I, I will let him I will let him go and, and, it, and I won't help. Look me in the eye and say that. I promise I won't do it. Not even your beloved Valkyrie will, will. Damn it, she figured out my plan. She instructs him to have Siegmund's sword split in two as he's about to stab Hunding. Brunhilde arrives and can cut the tension in this room with a knife, no joke. Wow, <laughs> dad and stepmom are uh, having a row. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stand in the corner there. Not gonna see me. You make sure she defends my honor. Do I have your word? Good, your father awaits you. I fear the dispute didn't go very well, dad. Now did it. Brunhilde can tell how heartbroken her father is and to say Votan is being dramatic, well, it's a Wagner opera, it's, it's to be expected. He's also worked really hard to get to this point. He had to go impregnate a mortal woman and then leave her alone with twins and then come back and like sometimes see the kids but never really paid welfare and then um, just disappeared let his daughter become a child bride and let his son go off and like have the worst luck ever. And then he put a sword in a tree and then he waited. Like he worked really hard to get to this point. He confines in Brunhilde and reveals his eye, picks up his eye patch, removes his eye patch to show her all the truth. He updates her on his plan and on everything that we just watched in the previous opera. 
Brynhilda tries to find a loophole in order to be able to help her father, but really there's nothing she can do. So she follows her father's orders and goes down to the land of the mortals to bring Zygmunt over for Frika. End of scene one. Scene two. Hoo -hoo. Back to the twins. They have been on the run all night. Come, dear sister wife, we must rest. Just leave me here and save yourself. I am so unworthy. Oh, oh. Realizing how she has wronged her loveless marriage, she can hear Hunding approaching and she just passes out. While Zygmunt is waiting for Hunding, Brunhilde arrives in order to prepare her half-brother for his journey. Will I be going to Valhalla and, and, and me seeing my father and then when I'm there will there be a lot of young maidens for me to... Um, um, yeah, sure, yes, yes, we can go with that. He asks if Zieglinda is going to be joining him as well. He does have a lot of requests and a lot of questions to ask. Uh, no, she won't. She has to stay in the land of the mortals, so you'll, you'll be going on your own. In which case, I will not die today and I am staying here with my sister wife. You can forget about it. I don't think he sounded like that. But since he has seen the face of a Valkyrie, he has to follow her. But he refuses to do so. Listen, as long as you're in the land of the living, I have no power over you. But the second you're in the land of the dead, I have no other options but to take you to where you need to go. And no, your sister cannot come with you. Listen, you, I have this magical sword. So therefore, <laughs> I'm going to win this battle. <laughs> I'm going to say this myself. So I'm not gonna be dying today, so you can go off and uh, think about what you just said. She then explains to him that the person who has bewitched the sword has now revoked the spell and therefore he will be dying today. And the sword is no longer victorious. And they go back and forth. Some things were said, probably shouldn't have said them. And even after offending Brynhilda, Brynhilda asks to protect Zieglinda while Zygmunt passes on to the next stage of his, of his existence. Zygmunt refuses again and then attempts to kill himself and his sister wife. While his half-sister caves and says that she will keep him alive. I have a very strong feeling she's going to completely regret that decision. She goes to prep for battle to help Zygmunt defeat Hunding. And after a bit of singing to his sister wife, Zygmunt does the same. Zieglinda wakes up to the sounds of the battle and bada bing bada boom they are now fighting. I got my sword out of your tree. Therefore, um, I am very strong, courageous, and worthy, unlike all the people who tried to get this out of your tree and weren't successful. So I'm gonna beat you today, man. But that confidence does not last long because Votan arrives. As Brunhilde rushes to Zygmunt's aid, Votan rushes to Hunding's aid and swoops in and stabs Zygmunt in the back while Hunding stabs him from the front. Ooh, double-edged sword there. Ouch. The sword flies up in the air, snaps into two, falls out of the ground. Brynhilde quickly grabs it and then grabs her half-sister, Zieglinda, who's still half and half in, in and out of conscious, and rushes off. Votan then watches Hunding stab his favorite son for the second time, you know, to can to really make sure that he is fully dead now. And then he sucks the life out of Hunding and stares at his beautiful dead son. Wait, where did, where did Brunhilde go? End of act two. That was a lot, but, but now is the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's all get on those flying horses, shall we not? As you do. The Valkyries are whistling while they're working, collecting all of the dead heroes to bring them over to their father's doorstep in Valhalla. So are we all here? Are we all ready to go? Got all the dead bodies? Okay, great. Oh no, where's Brynhilda? Okay, we'll wait for her. Oh, there she is. Wait, she has a live one. Is that, is that a woman? What has she done? What's going on? What the actual Frika is she doing? Brynhilde updates them on everything that's happened and explains that she is now on the run from Votan. Hide me, sisters, please! Deluded sister, what have you done? No one is willing to help her out. 
Suddenly, Sikh Linda seems to be full of life after she's been unconscious for basically the last hour and a half of this opera. Don't worry yourselves with me. I just want to die and be with my, my Siegmund. Live, woman, for goodness sake. It's not for you, but for the Valsung that's in your womb. Excuse me? Come again? What? <laughs> When did she get pregnant? It, it was like, it happened so fast. It was not even a whole night. It only takes one night, doesn't it? I'm pregnant? Save me! Well, that was a fast change. No, no, absolutely not. Save a mother. Oh, she's really getting into character. Brunhilde instructs her to run away to the land where Albrecht and Fafner live, where Wotan can't go. And right before she runs off, she gives her the edge pieces of the broken sword. I will um, quickly mention that Brynhilda is all seeing. She can see past, present, future, everything, everything that was and will be. Just so you know, you are carrying the world's greatest hero inside your belly. Remember that she is all seeing. She names her unborn nephew Siegfried and sends her sister away to the land of Fafner and Albrecht. Quickly, Wotan is almost there. Brynhilda goes to hide behind her sisters who have now caved just a bit. You can't see me, right? Wotan arrives. This was cute when you girls were four. I can see you. Brynhilda, I can see you. After a while, Brynhilda caves and shows herself to her father. As a punishment, he revokes her powers as a Valkyrie and denounces her as a daughter, especially especially his favorite daughter. She is now banished to become a mortal. You will be locked on this mountain until a man comes to save you. No, no, father, reverse your curse. Must she be wasted by a man? I love how with that entire curse, the worst part is that she's going to be wasted by a man or married off to a man. Yeah, the like loss of immortality is like, oh, no big deal. But a man? She will fall into favor with a man and her beauty will wither. She will sit by the fire and embroider all day long and be the butt of all mockery. What's wrong with the embroidering part? Kind of like that one. I want to do that. <laughs> no, no, dad, please, no. He casts off the sisters and warns them that whoever tries to help her will suffer the same exact fate. Just Brunhilde and Wotan are left on the rock. They have a long heart to heart, and you can really tell how heartbroken Wotan is about this whole situation. He's lost a son and a daughter of his favorites in one day. Dad, can I just, can I just ask you one favor? Can a Valsung save me in the end? Absolutely not. They are one, dead to me, and two, like, actually dead. So how do you expect that to happen? Well, actually, uh, uh, about that, um... See, Glinda's with child. Can can that child come and save me? So basically, she's asking for her unborn nephew to come of age and come and save her, uh, as his as his wife. So she wants to become his aunt bride. Apparently, Jon Snow is not the first one to think about this. I can't make that choice for you. But as a gift, he puts her in a sleeping curse so she won't um, be bored out of her mind for at least 15 years. Just like any other fairy tale, really. And father, just one last thing. Can you please at least surround me with like awful horrors and terrors so only the bravest of people can come and like save me? Well, the bravest person can come and save me? Like I'm thinking flames, like flames everywhere. Just like flame, 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 everywhere flame. Flame. He caves and agrees. Long musical interlude to remind us how dramatic this all is and how emotional it all is. And because you haven't been sitting down long enough, so just to give you a little bit longer before you can stretch your legs. But Votan bids a long farewell to his daughter. He kisses both of her eyes to sleep, lays her down, puts her in her armor so at least she'll be comfortable and cozy while she sleeps for approximately maybe 15 or 20 years. We don't know. And calls upon Loge to come and help him put flames everywhere around this rock. Flame, 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 everywhere flame, flame. But now that Brynhilda is safely placed inside a fireplace and is nice and toasty, part two of the saga is now come to an end, come to a close. The end of this one. Looking forward to seeing you in the next chapter of this saga. Any guesses what it's about? I'll give you a hint called Siegfried. 
that's all folks thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this not so little video i look forward to seeing you in part three and four of this opera and in any other videos so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what other operas other than the ring cycle you would like me to synopses the link for all of the other synopses i've done will be right here and i will see you in a new video very very soon check out my patreon to make sure that these videos happen with that have a great 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 week drink lots and lots of tea maybe don't uh freak with your sister anyway use the hashtag diva studies to let me know what you're up to and uh i will see you very soon watch an opera because there's nothing else to do these days bye